Hey guys, so welcome back to Miller Med Talks. Um, I know it's been a week or two, um, been a little bit busy, life gets in the way sometimes, had exams on. I turned another year older, so I had to obviously celebrate that, which obviously knocks out a couple of days when you're, you know, trying to find that party work balance. So today what I want to talk to you guys about is um, a very, very common class of medications called ACE inhibitors. So ACE inhibitors stands for angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. So what is this? So basically it's going to inhibit that enzyme. Okay. So in order for us to fully understand um, the mechanism of action of how an ACE inhibitor works, we need to understand the uh, system it works in. So this system is called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, also known as the RAS system. So I've drawn this diagram. I hope you guys can all see it and read it okay. Um, so basically the liver will produce angiotensinogen, which then gets converted to angiotensin 1, and then through the mechanism of angiotensin converting enzyme, angiotensin 1 gets converted to angiotensin 2. As you can see, angiotensin 2 has a lot of profound effects on the body, including increased sympathetic, sympathetic activity, increase of tubular sodium reabsorption, increase of a potassium excretion, H2O retention, aldosterone secretion, arteriolar vasoconstriction, which then leads to increased blood pressure. So we get the um, AT1 receptor binding to the GQ protein uh, on the IP3 signal transduction pathway. So that, that goes into a bit more biochemistry. I don't think we need that right now. Um, so yeah, the vasoconstriction, we also get antidiuretic hormone secretion, which then leads to the H2O reabsorption. So all of these effects of angiotensin 2 will lead to uh, water and salt retention. So ultimately, um, it's going to increase blood pressure. So what ACE inhibitors do is they are going to work on the angiotensin converting enzyme, which is produced in the lungs and the kidney endothelium. So ACE is produced there and it helps to convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Yep. So if we want to stop this downstream effect, all these effects that angiotensin 2 has, we need to inhibit the conversion of it. So that's where the ACE inhibitor comes in. So it's going to come in, it's going to competitively um, bind to the receptor on ACE and it's going to block the production of angiotensin 2. Yes? So that's the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Very important to know this to gain a thorough understanding of how ACE inhibitors work. So what are ACE inhibitors? So the easiest way to remember these are to remember the, um, it, they all end in a prill. So depending on what country you're in, each country slightly has different ones. Um, the main ones are listed. So Captopril, Enalapril, Ficinopril, Lisinopril, Quinopril, Ramopril and Perindopril. So I know for instance in Australia, um, we commonly, we see a lot of doctors prescribing mainly the ramaprils and perindopril's. So these are the most common ones and obviously dependent on the patient and their needs and their current blood pressure and their target and the indication will depend on what dose we give them. And obviously other things like renal function. So there's heaps of other considerations we need to take into when selecting which one is correct and then also what dose is correct because these medications do come in um, several different dosages, yeah? So for instance, your perindopril will come in, testing my knowledge now, 2.5, 5, and 10 milligrams if we're using perindopril arginine. We also have the other isomer, perindopril erbumine, which comes in the 2, 4, and 8 milligrams, yes? So the isomer switch with the perindopril arginine and erbumine is something we always need to be aware of. So if a patient comes in with a bottle saying, Perindopril arginine 5, and then they say, I've gone to another pharmacy and they've given me perindopril herbumine 4. It is 100% bioequivalent. 
Yes, yeah, so the pharmacist can't actually swap it unless it's bioequivalent. So this is something that doctors aren't always aware of. Most are, but we do need to emphasize to the patient that you have been given the right item. It's just a different isomer. Yes, but same bi biological um, equivalence in the body. So indications of ACE inhibitors. So it's usually used first line for hypertension in almost every country and all resources. Um, also renal artery stenosis, acute myocardial infarction and heart failure. Um, now side effects of this medication can be hypotension. So this can sometimes be if the medication is basically working too well or if the um, dose is too high and then we need to do a dose adjustment. Hyperkalemia. So this is an increase of potassium in the body. So we need to be really careful with these patients and their diets. So we need to make sure that they're not going on a massive potassium rich diet. Just making sure that they've got a stable, healthy diet. Yeah, because we, we don't want to run the risk of hyperkalemia. Because as we saw before in the RAS system, usually angiotensin 2 will cause a um, potassium excretion. So because we're blocking that, potassium is not going to get excreted. It's going to be held in the body. So we do need to monitor um, potassium levels to make sure they don't go too high. Um, angioedema. So this is a fluid, excess buildup of fluid, because that is just a common side effect of it due to also the mechanism. So by inhibiting this, we are then going to have um, yeah, various effects in terms of fluid in, in parts of the body. Okay, dry cough. So 10% of patients prescribed this medication will experience a dry cough. Now, this here is basically due to um, bradykinin not being broken down. So usually bradykinin gets broken down by angiotensin 2 effects. By blocking the angiotensin 2, we then inhibit the bradykinin breakdown. We get an increase of bradykinin, and this can lead to a dry cough. So if a patient on an ACE inhibitor is coming in with a dry cough um, that has persisted for quite some time, this is simple. We can just convert them to another, um, a drug, another drug class, yeah, and then see how they go and monitor from there. So overall, these ACE inhibitors have a low side effect profile and they are generally well tolerated. So we commonly see these used very, very often. So basically, we've gone through the indications, we've gone through the side effects, we've gone through what medications they are. So they end in pril usually. Um, so actions by basically, it works on the RAS system by preventing the actions of angiotensin 2 so all those actions on here, so by basically inhibiting this from happening, we're then going to end up with dilation of the arteries and veins, um, which is going to decrease blood pressure. It's going to reduce preload and afterload on the heart. It's going to downregulate sympathetic adrenergic activity and inhibit effects of angiotensin 2 on the sympathetic nervous system and reuptake of norepinephrine. Um, we are also going to promote renal excretion of sodium and water. So this is going to have a diuretic effect, which is good, which is what we want with patients that have hypertension. So it's going to have a, an indirect diuretic effect by promoting the excretion of the um, salt and water. Um, and it's also going to inhibit cardiac and vascular remodeling. So you can see that's why we use this for several things like first line for hypertension, as well as other cardiovascular um, indications such as acute myocardial infarction and heart failure because it does have a number of benefits. Usually we might see this um, combined with another medication. So a lot of the ACE inhibitors come in a combination with a diuretic or um, we might see it used with a daily aspirin or depending on what the indication is, yes? Pregnancy, we want to avoid it. There are other medications we'll use for um, pregnant women with hypertension. But yeah, so basically just to recap, uh, what is an ACE inhibitor? An ACE inhibitor is going to convert, prevent this, sorry, ugh. an ACE inhibitor is going to prevent the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Yep, so it's going to inhibit ACE.
preventing angiotensin II, which is then going to prevent all those effects that we had that angiotensin II creates. Therefore, we're going to get a reduction in blood pressure through a vasodilation effect. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys understood it. It was a little bit jumpy. Um, I prefer not to script my videos. I like them to just sort of be raw and real. Um, you just have a couple of little notes, a couple of little diagrams. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free um, to leave a comment below. Otherwise, apart from that, I hope you guys are now going to be experts on ACE inhibitors. Bye.